Where's the Alaska rumor coming from? Good evening and welcome to this meeting or this evening's meeting of the Westerville City Schools Board of Education. As you see the agenda is displayed on the screen in front of you um, and there will be two opportunities tonight to address the board. The first being agenda item 6.01. The first set of public com comments are relative to Agenda items 7.01 through 12.02. Please state the agenda items you are referencing at the beginning of your comments. The second opportunity is an item 13.01. This public comment section is for items not on this evening's agenda. There is a sign up sheet located on the table in the back of the room, and each speaker will have five minutes to address the board. And with that, Mr. Griffith, will you please take the roll? Mr. Bird? Yeah, here. Dr. Carol French? Here. Dr. Nestor Baker? Here. Mr. Villardo? Yes, here. Mrs. Davidson? Here. Will you please join us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, first up tonight, which I assume most of you are here for, um, district highlights and recognitions, the North Mock Trial Team. Mr. Villardo, would you like to introduce this? I believe Dr. Kellogg is going to go first in this. <clears throat> That's okay, thank you, President Davidson, and members of the board. You know, with all of the uh, fanfare going on around the nation right now with uh, Mid, uh, March Madness basketball, Ohio State National Championships in wrestling, and our own Westerville South in the Final Four of the State Basketball Tournament. It's a pleasure tonight to also be able to recognize some students from some really, really outstanding work, academic work, uh, at our core mission. So it's my pleasure to bring to the podium from Westerville North High School Principal Kurt Yancey to introduce his students and staff members. Kurt? Good evening. President Davidson, Superintendent Kellogg, members of the Board of Education. It is my pleasure tonight to introduce you to an amazing group, amazing group of young people who are, who are Westerville North Warriors. These students and advisors are now part of our proud tradition of state champions. They are our seventh, seventh team champion and have brought true honor to the Warrior and Westerville City Schools community. All of the other state championships at our building have been an athletic competition. This one is an academic state championship. Over 300 teams from across the, across the state competed for this honor, and one remained at the end of the day. It was our warrior mock trial team that stood alone on top of the podium. We are so proud of them for this amazing achievement. And also, we, would, we appreciate and are thankful for the recognition they are receiving tonight from our Board of Education and our Central Office Administration. We look forward to their future achievements at Nationals in May. And I have the, at this time, I have the pleasure and honor and pleasure of introducing their advisor. He is a dedicated individual who has worked extremely hard with his students and staff to build a tradition of excellence. The Westerville North fa family is so proud of the way that he and the members of the mock trial family have represented our school community as true warriors. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Warrior Mock Trial Head Coach, Mr. Zach Wilkerson, who has a few words to share with you about mock trial, his colleagues, and his phenomenal students. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Zach Wilkerson. Thank you, Mr. Yancey. Um, and uh, first of all, I'd like to say uh, thank you to the board for recognizing um, our students and our uh, volunteer advisors and coaches. Um, what, what they did this year uh, was just incredible. Um, our, our season uh, is extremely long. They put in an unbelievable amount of work. Um, we start in September and we go all the way through March, uh, you know, anywhere from eight to 20 hours a week. 
Um, and, and along the way, we have you know at least nine different trials, and they can't lose any of them. Uh, you know, this year they beat uh, multiple state champions uh, in the past, uh, and they've done uh, really incredible work along the way. Um, and so it'll be my pleasure to introduce to you both the students and the advisors to this team. Um, and, and the advisors, uh, for the record, uh, all three of them are volunteers. They, they also put in an, an unbelievable amount of work uh, to this team for our students, um, and we wouldn't be anywhere without them. Um, so I will uh, introduce the team. Um, I'll go alphabetically. Um, so first of all, we will start with um, Diana Asta. Next, we have Jennifer Finkelstein. Next, we have Tristan Justice. <laughs> Tristan wants to be a politician, for the record. <laughs> I'm sure he's got a good handshake. <laughs> Next, we have Jacqueline Clouse. Next, we have Amanda Lamb. Next, we have our team captain, Tiffany McCutcheon.
Next we have Jeffrey Rhodes. And next we have the uh, winner of Best Witness in the state final round, uh, Matt Spadero. And our final member of Team Darrow is Jacob Waldruff. And next we have our uh, volunteer advisors and coaches. Um, first of all, uh, the legal advisor for the last 19 years and uh, the great educator mentor award winner of 2014 for Westerville North, we have Ken Donchatz. Next, we have our uh, first year legal advisor, Scott Longo. And finally, we have a teacher who uh, retired from Westerville North a number of years ago and has been helping us since, um, Dr. Tom Pete. Very exciting, really. Thank you for being here tonight and representing us so well. And those of you that are seniors and moving on, that's awesome. The rest of you, uh, repeat. <laughs> <laughs> Resolution of commendation for Westerville North High School. Whereas under the tutelage of Westerville North High School Library Media Specialist Zach Wilkerson, 10 students formed Team Darrow to compete in mock trial contest, and whereas legal advisor Ken Donchatz, who has been working with mock trial teams at Westerville North for the past 19 years, joined attorney Scott Longo and retired social studies teacher Dr. Tom Pete to help advise the team, and whereas Team Darrow defeated, we meant to put the word crushed in there, but we thought that'd be a little, <laughs> 
Sorry, sorry, sorry. Defeated Delaware Hayes and Northland High School at the district level on January 30, 2015, and whereas a month later at regionals, they won against Thomas Worthington and Olivia Davidson Washington High Schools before being named one of the state's elite 32 teams and whereas along with team accolades, individual group members took 18 individual awards during their nine trials during the season and whereas Team Darrow swept a three-day state competition by winning cases against Danville defeating state champions Sylvania Southview, four-time state champions Indian Hill and Nordonia High School, and whereas Westerville North High School's Team Darrow emerged victorious, the Ohio Mock Trial State Championship by defeating Ashland High School at the Ohio State, at the Ohio State House in televised finals held on March 14, 2015. Therefore, be it resolved that Westerville City Schools Board of Education and Superintendent commend Westerville North High School and Team Darrow for these outstanding accomplishments and for bringing honor and distinction to our school district and community. And we wish them continued success as they compete at the national level in Raleigh, North Carolina, May 14, 16, 2015. Congratulations. You want to come up and shake their hands? So before you exit, just a shameless plug um, for anybody who's listening. Um, they're raising funds for the trip to North Carolina. And correct me if I'm wrong, you've posted on the Westerville Education Foundation fundraising site. Am I correct? We've already actually already We're done? Yeah. Then thank you to everybody who contributed to help that along. That's awesome. Awesome. Good luck down there. And, and we always forget the wonderful principal, Mr. Yancey, who always does all the great work and supports the team. So thank you, Kurt. We appreciate it. Good one, Carol. I think I, I think I always lift it. I can't even remember the green one. Every once in a while I have to think it through. Yes, 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 yes. It doesn't come to me. I know. This is, I'm really glad to see this. Okay, if you're all sitting in the back of the room, we'd like you guys to come up front. <laughs> no? Really? Aww. <laughs> Are you sure? Okay. I'd applaud your efforts. <laughs> okay, I guess we'll move on to 4.01, discussion and approval of the minutes of the March 9th meeting. Do we have any comments? Nope. Okay, which takes us to 5.01 food service report. Dr. Kellogg? Yeah. Thank you, President Davidson, members of the board. Uh, tonight we have a report from Carrie Dan Dennis, who um, runs our, food, well, doesn't run, but leads our food service department. And this is, um, there's lots of parts of the organization that uh, have to click to make things work real well transportation, maintenance, custodial services, and food services is one of them. Um, and I think it would be helpful for the board uh, and for the public to see the kind of work that goes on behind the scenes, the magnitude of it, and then the efficiency of it uh, to which um, uh, Carrie and her team uh, deliver to our students every day. So I'm going to turn it over to Carrie to share with you what's going on in food services here in Westville City Schools. Carrie? 
Good evening, President Davidson, members of the board, Mr. Griffith, and Dr. Kellogg. First, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity for our first food service department presentation. I'm excited for the opportunity. So to tell you a little bit about our food service department, we have 93 employees, which consist of seven managers, one in each of our middle and high school locations. They are backed up by assistant managers at each of those locations as well. Four department heads in our elementary satellite locations, those service just our elementary schools. We run one kitchen out of um, Central High School and one out of Westerville South High School. 14 leads, so one in each of our elementary buildings. Um, 27 food service worker ones, those people who um, have specialized jobs in their areas as, run, as well as run our point of sale systems. Those are primarily in our uh, middle and high schools. 34 food service worker two positions. Those are employees who work as service and prep primarily, and they are throughout our district in all levels of um, our buildings. Our revenue service um, sources, I'm sorry, for our department, um, we have about 4.7 million projected revenue in our budget. So 51% of that comes from our federal claims reimbursement from um, our participation in our reimbursable meal program. 1% in our state matching funds, 5% from our USDA commodity program, which is also tied into the participation in the reimbursement, reimbursable meal program. Um, and that lovely 0.01% from interest. <laughs> Gotta account for all of it. Additional revenue sources are our student a la carte purchases, which is 41%, so not too far behind our um, federal resources. Adult a la carte purchases from our teachers and staff in our buildings, and catering rebates and other sources, which could come from um, building events, facility rentals, and then um, we cater the meals for the warm summer feeding program for their kids camp program, and it's been a wonderful opportunity for us. Includes a picture of one of our meals that we catered. Student participation throughout the district when food service. At breakfast year to date, we've served about 16% of our district students, average of um, 2,296 meals a day, of which you can see the breakdown for which um, levels of free, reduced, and paid student are participating in that. In comparison to last year, we're up about 2% for breakfast, and we continue to see that increase, um, which we welcome. The average daily participation for lunch, um, this year we are um, serving about 39% of our student population. And again, you can see the breakdowns for free, reduced, and paid. This is a history, free and reduced lunch history within our district from 2001 fiscal year to current. Sorry, the graph's a little small, it was a lot of years to cover. But you can see the continual rise in that. Um, Interesting, going back for um, employment history, in 2004-2005 school year, we had 106 food service employees. So as our guidelines have become more and more strict, our wellness policy has implemented, and we're seeing a rise in our free and reduced, we've actually been reducing staff to keep things lean and allow as much resources to go back into our students. Um, we're in our second op year operation for our online lunch application program, which has been very successful for our department. We actually have had a reduction in the overtime associated with the applications by 70% from going from a paper application to an online application. We still do have paper applications. It just gives the families an opportunity to do this offsite. Um, the bulk of our students who are approved um, are done so through our direct certification program. Those come from um, the federal government towards us, and they are those families who are on the Ohio Works First, SNAP, and some foster children who are automatically qualify for the program. So you can see the number there. The remaining amounts come um, from uh, the actual online application process. The above numbers <laughs> include 159 afternoon kindergarten students who do not participate in breakfast, for the obvious reason, and uh, minimal participation, participation in lunch based on the scheduling, which also affects those 187 morning kindergartners who we have minimal participation in breakfast as well, but um, few participate in lunch just based on scheduling. So we're excited to see that implementation of 
the all-day kindergarten program as it's starting and we'll be able to service more of our students hopefully we also have 50 preschool students who do not currently participate but they benefit from the fee uh, reduction just from the application or the direct certification process <laughs> the easy pay online payment system there are a number of different systems out there ours is easy pay currently it was introduced to our district in October of 2008 we've seen a steady increase in the participation um, since its inception it allows the families to quickly put uh, money into their students accounts it allows those lines to go faster uh, we utilize that through student ID numbers at our registers or through their ID cards either options available to them we also have since started using that um, system for school fees as well as athletic fees that are elementary and uh, middle schools USDA guidelines is what our governing body and choices are for food service um, schools must follow food-based menu planning and I've got an example on the next slide of that menus must meet minimal daily and weekly quantities and types of food items including meat, meat alternates grains fruits vegetables um, and milk offerings and our milk offerings must come um, from two different types meaning 1% um, plain or unflavored fat free unflavored or plain and as well as um, the flavored milk options as well here in the graph it might be a little hard for you to see I apologize for that but it, this breaks down how we plan our menus what our guidelines are um, requirements and vegetables is a big breakdown for us um, and dark greens orange legumes starchy and other vegetables kids favorites especially in elementary level or at least ones they would eat often fall into that other and starchy food group so we um, have made some adjustments to the menu and our offerings to allow one for us to be compliant and two for the students to have a variety um, we also watch our calorie average meals have to average a certain amount of calories a week can't have more than 10 percent saturated fat and offerings and then that's all based off of and was implemented around the time that the um, government USDA went away from the food guide pyramid and went to the my plate um, option so this is what lunch looks like for our elementary students we implemented produce bars this year at all of our elementary schools so you see that we offered um, on this particular day cherry tomatoes carrot coins and sugar snap peas and then the reimbursable meal for that day so that student has two vegetables a fruit and um, twin mini cheeseburgers as well as their milk <laughs> sliders <laughs> um, so for our middle school students you'll see that um, we also have and this was part of our new construction this year some of our additional funding went back into um, three of our locations this is London Middle School so you see the salad bar at that location um, the students have an opportunity to make themselves a salad it could be a side item or an entree they have an option just to choose veggies to as a side item as a, a veggie boat um, they may also have the deli bar for them where they can have fresh sandwiches made for them just as they would at Subway and choose your toppings and we've got different sauces that they can choose from as well we like the opportunity to make the students happy I love this picture it shows that big smile and I accidentally caught it <laughs> and then what lo lunch looks like for our high school students again you'll see a salad bar at this location this is Westerville South they have some cantal fresh cantaloupe and um, honeydew melon on theirs as well as an offerings of salads or side items for their um, fresh vegetables their hotline had three additional vegetable offerings in the hot selection that day which was carrot coins green beans and a mixed vegetable and then you see a baked ziti meat um, pasta option that day it was the pasta bar day <clears throat> other highlights from our department is our real meal deal and that allows the students to make menu selections based on their individual preferences so we take that my choice and we start them young at the elementary level and they can build their meals we um, offer versus serve in our entire district that allows students to want to have just a sandwich and a fruit that day they can do that or they can take up to a sandwich a fruit a vegetable a milk in the high school level their requirements are a little higher they get a little bit more 
Um, and again, the addition of the produce bars at all of our elementary schools and the salad bars at our middle and high schools. Our department goals for the upcoming year um, is to establish a benchmark from student input via surveys. Um, the technology roadmap for the district is um, exciting and I think we'd like to get on board with that and start taking the opportunity while the students are in line to getting some of their feedback um, and, and putting that in some of the decisions we make, meals coming forward, changes we need to make right now. Those are good too. Um, we're looking forward to have the opportunity um, to get involved with the renovation at Point View and, and the possible renovations of the Walnut Springs Middle School cafeteria to go along with that great um, new Center for Creation they've got going there. So again, we'd like to thank you for the opportunity um, to talk about food service. Any questions? Any questions? Comments? Quick comment, one, where's the burger and fries? Because that's what I grew up on. We still <coughs> offer burger and fries, it's not fried anymore. <laughs> a couple things, um, one is if, if you wouldn't mind taking an opportunity, we have some folks in Absolutely. the back here with you, I thought it might be great to introduce as well. I'm sure you had that on the docket, but I figured I'd jump in and steal Absolutely. your thunder. Why don't you go ahead and introduce them as well. Um, so we have the two assistant managers, Gary Hinkles out of Westerville South, um, satellite is what we call that, but uh, two of the middle schools and one of the high schools also report to him. Um, so Gary. <laughs> and Brent Kassler, who has Central Satellite. So he has the schools that report through there as well. And then um, the heartbeat of our department, Ms. Wanda Myers, the food service secretary, who we would be lost without. <laughs> Hi. Um, I have a question. Do, have you done any studies or noticed or done any just informal surveys of how much goes in a dumpster? Uh, um, we have not officially done anything at this point, but I think that we'd be very um, interested in getting involved in that. There were some studies that the ODE did um, last year where they actually had a group of uh, several groups of colleges that got involved with weighing trays prior to. Um, we had an opportunity to see that at the fall ODE conference and it was really neat to see. So it would be interesting to team up somehow and um, get that accomplished to see what we're looking at in waste. Well, I mean, I, I, I've i stood uh, and watched, you know, when they just bring their tray back and dump it out. So I didn't know if you've noticed any difference in that, just well, informally. <clears throat> informally, I would say that there probably is an increase in waste. We we probably have seen some of that. because of the that. federal re uh, requirements, do you think? You're asking everything I was going <laughs> to ask. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, okay, great minds think alike. Um, Yes. Yes. When any time you put a requirement for a student to have to take something, yeah. you're going to see an increase in that. Mm -hmm. We utilize share tables at a lot of our buildings in our districts at the discretion of the principal, where if a student takes something that they didn't necessarily want, or maybe they got to the end of their meal and they were full and couldn't have that, they can leave it on the share table. And a student who may be, still be hungry can take advantage of that opportunity. We then, um, share those items at times with the school nurse. So if a student's in the afternoon is hungry or whatever may be going on, that we can share that with them as well. Yeah. What about them taking it back to their room? They probably can't. Uh, um, they can. I think it's yeah. at the discretion of the building as yeah. to how they address that. Um, we encourage it's theirs. You know, once it leaves our cafeteria, it's theirs to do with. Mm -hmm. We do worry a little bit about um, food safety yeah. in some of those instances, but it's just getting involved. About how many buildings would you say are participating in that sharing table? Um, Just about all the elementaries. All the elementaries. Um, most of the middle schools, I would say. Yeah, we do see it. I'd, I would say in probably almost all of them. There may be just one or two that are not taking advantage of that. Glad, I'm glad they're all participating. That's a really good idea, yeah. Yeah. especially for some of our kids who are just downright hungry. Absolutely, absolutely. For whatever reason that may be. <laughs> um, the other question I have, we, I hadn't seen this before, so will you put that online for us to, to see so we can Thanks. you know, copy this or Happy give us a, a copy of it? Um, the question I have is why back on your first, um, uh, first or second slide there, um, regarding the state uh, reimbursement, which um, is there a way to uh, increase that or how is that determined? I assume that maybe there's a, a formula or something. You told us 51% from the feds and then, yeah, 
Mm -hmm. The matching funds, what's very low, what does that mean? Um, <clears throat> so reimbursable meals are um, any of those meals that meet those guidelines. So they have to choose the fruit or vegetable. They come through the line. Speak a little slower, I please. apologize. A tendency to Again? do that. <laughs> reimbursable meals are those meals in which they are meet the requirements. So this year they're required to take a fruit or vegetable, and they have to have three of the five components. Yes. Um, any of our students are eligible to meet that through that real deal that we offer. So a paid student, a free student or a reduced student, all, we get some level of funding for each of them. A paid student is at um, $2.98. A reduced student, we get $2.58. Mm -hmm. For every paid student, we get 20 cents. 28 cents. 28 cents, I apologize. Um, the way to increase that amount is through participation. Um, increasing the students participating. We implemented that real deal, which gave every student the opportunity to take advantage of a plated lunch, as it might have been formally known. Um, by qualifying every item we serve in our cafeteria to be plated. Um, that was a very big change for us, and it, we saw a large increase in our participation numbers just from that, during that time frame. Um, <clears throat> but that is largely driven by student participation in a reimbursable meal. So the kids who aren't coming through just wanting a slice of pizza, but maybe they want a slice of pizza and some grapes or a veggie item. So the short of it is what? <laughs> you, uh, you, have, you get so much because they buy their lunch and um, meet the federal requirements. Correct. Okay. So driving up participation in our program. Obviously, it's not much from the state then, okay. No, state And one more little question. Okay. Um, are you in the black or in the red? Are you self-sufficient? I well, haven't are, looked at that. We are self-sufficient, have maintained um, being in the black Thank you. for, uh, I don't know that we've ever ran in the red, have we? Once or twice, I've ran in the red. No. We, we actually were, um, so far into the black and park, that, correct me if I'm wrong, that we, right. we hit the ceiling point of what you can keep in the bank. That's the reason we have to. Yeah. And that's why we're t putting that back in the capital improvement project. So some of the cafeterias that we redid were from those funds and we continue to operate that way. The, the piece that I found interesting that um, you kind of skimmed around, but is this whole educational component that's in there for kids? As, as they're growing young people about making food choices around those four areas, the food pyramid's gone, so all that learning I did in elementary school is shot, <laughs> um, along with most of the history I learned. And, and so watching uh, young people having to start thinking about their food choices and what they mean in the balance of their life as they go through the system, I think it's interesting. And then the opportunity that they're talking about in terms of getting student feedback um, about the choices and what they mean to them, I think, um, it's, it's, it's good stuff, because that's really where we want young people to be. I would hope that a high school student is able to take a look at food options and think about their total health and make the right decisions uh, around what they're putting on their plate um, each and every day, because it's an important part to their productivity, both at school and outside of school. So um, it's, a, it's a good life skill, um, and I, I think they do it in subtle ways without the kids even knowing, um, uh, which is good, and I appreciate their effort. So. And they run a they run a good ship. It's a good it's a good part of our of our organization. Thank you. I very much appreciate your work with Warm, and that's a it's a really important partnership. I'm very glad that that continues. And I know there are discussions going on even now about what's going to be happening this summer. I expect to see that increase and our participation increase as well. So thank you very much for the work that you do there. I had a it's more of a curiosity question than anything else. There has been a lot of press about the federal changes, and most of it has been negative press about the federal changes. And as you think about uh, the changes that have gone into play in the past few years, what has been the most problematic for you for food service here? Personally, opinion sure. only, um, I would say that it would have been the initial changes. When we initially stopped serving desserts and sweets <coughs> and fried foods, um, took out milkshake machines, you know, that was an elimination of jobs along the way. That shift was hard for staff to get on board with. The shift was hard for the students at the time, but we are four years into a change now that those students were in middle school and it's becoming more normal. Um, I think the requirements within that, 
um, some of the ones that we see coming down the pike. Sodium requirement um, finished implementation is set for 2022. That would make almost in line with um, a heart healthy patient diet in a hospital setting. Um, so we're seeing some kickback there, but it's not there. We're not there yet. We'll see if it changes. Um, I think that it's just those initial shifts. And as the students get on board, as we try to make options available to them that are in line and show them that you can have a well-balanced meal without all the others. Um, we've uh, taken the opportunity from our standpoint to get creative. We do a burrito bar, which is in line with some of those restaurant chains that we see. We do an Italian street fair bar. Um, we have tacos. We've got foods that they see all the time. It's just within portion control. Add the extra veggies in. You can get a whole lot more to filling meals. So I see the good and bad. I, you know, seeing it from the start and the initial impact and seeing where we're at today, where the students, they're a lot more accepting of it. Thank you. Thank you. Just a, a quick thank you to all of you, and thanks for coming tonight. You you serve in one of those areas that's really kind of unsung, unheralded, uh, but let's face it, it's it's pretty vital. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I I I'm trying to convince my son that apple juice is not the same thing as an apple, but you know, that's a personal debate we're having. <laughs> but I really I, I thank you for what y'all do, and it's uh, it's just. Uh, it's behind the scenes, but it's awfully, awfully important. And, and you, you clearly are doing this diligently and faithfully and uh, in the black. That's, that's really awesome. So thanks for coming tonight and, and, and educating us. Thank you. Thank you. And one quick thing. <laughs> so I just wanted to say thank you for reaching out to the kids and asking them what they want because I think if you can get buy out from them then change is going to be a lot easier so thank you you're welcome That's good. thank you and thank you for what you do okay we do not have any public comments this first section so moving on to 7.01 a resolution to approve the financial reports and investments as of February 28 2015 may I please have a motion so moved. And second? Second. Art, do you want to talk to us? Sure. Uh, Madam President, members board, the financial report ending February 2015. For the general fund, year-to-date receipts is $134,573,000. Year-to-date expenditures for the general fund are $94,028,000. Uh, all funds, year-to-date receipt was $174,820,000. All funds year-to-date expenditures are 134,015,000. The unencumbered fund balance for all funds is 90,290,000. And to answer your question for food service, they're 1.2 million in the black right now. And that's the reports. No questions? Okay, I'm gonna take the roll. Uh, Mr. Villardo. Yes. Dr. Nestor Baker. Yes. Mr. Bird. Yes. Dr. Dr. Carol French. Yes. Mrs. Davidson. Yes. Okay, moving on to personnel <coughs> consent agenda. We have 8.01 through 8.09, and Lori's going to come talk to us this evening. Good evening, President Davidson, members of the board. Tonight's consent agenda has nine sections involving 51 people. Section 8.01, we have resignations of classified staff, two staff and one substitute. Section 8.02, resignations of two teachers. Section 8.03, we have four licensed uh, retirements. Section 8.04, one classified staff leave of absence. Section 8.05, three classified staff contractual status changes. Section 8.06, change of assignment for eight classified staff. Section 8.07, we have a, an adjustment to some one-time payments that goes back to waiver day in February. These first appeared on the um, January 26, 2015 consent agenda. Section 8.08, .08, we have employment for classified staff. We have six staff, two substitutes, and one supplemental contract. 
and Section 8.09, licensed employment. We have one home instruction tutor and various supplemental positions. And at this time, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. You know what, before we take questions, can I please have a motion? I apologize. So moved. And a second? Second. Okay. Any questions? I have just an explanation for uh, 8.06. Um, and I must be missing something here. I don't know. Um, one of them is September 5th, port 19 or 2014 through March 23rd, 2015. What is the? Uh, did we miss um, a, a movement in a no. position or what? Actually, I'll answer that one. That's one of my staff members. We had a person out with some cancer issues for the for the entire period, okay. and rather than hire somebody new, we moved around our staff and had somebody fill that position, and we sort of reshuffled it around. And she was in that position all that time. And then when she came back, we sort of reshuffled, you know, there's another motion on that. We reshuffled the positions again and sort of kept her in payroll at the same time. So she's in another person. That's my staff. Okay. Okay. Thanks. And it was due to, due to a person who was actually out. We, again, we didn't fill her with somebody else. We just reshuffled within our department. All right. Thank you. I don't think there's anything else. No, the only thing I want to say is I'm, I'm getting closer every time to making a, a no vote just out of principle because some of these people who are leaving it just, oh, I just hate to see the loss of their remarkable abilities as educators. <sighs> but I won't vote no. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> Another three or four retirements, I'll be over the edge. <laughs> it's all right, Nancy. <laughs> it's, it's all right. It's it. We, 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 <laughs> okay. Dr. Nestor Baker? Yes. Dr. French? Yes. Mr. Bird? Yes. Mr. Villardo? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Thank you, Lori. Um, policy consent? We have none. Old business? We do not have any. New business? We do not have any. Um, standing business 12.01 is a resolution to approve an increase in school lunch prices for the 2015 2016 year. May I please have a motion? So moved. And a second? Second. Oh, and Carrie's back. She didn't yeah. talk to us. Good evening again. President Davidson, members of the board, Mr. Griffith and Dr. Kellogg. Um, agenda item 12.01, standing business. We've made a resolution to approve an increase in the school lunch prices for the 2015-2016 school year. The school program regulations require school food service authorities participating in the National School Lunch Program to have equity and fair pricing. Some of that was through the discussion we just shared with the food service about how um, we're reimbursed for meals. Um, this ensures sufficient funds and are provided to nonprofit school food service accounts for meals served to students not eligible for free or reduced meals. There are two ways to meet this requirement, either through the prices charged for paid meals or through other non-federal sources provided to a nonprofit school food service account. So based on the USDA formula, the average price for lunch charged in the district must be $2.70 in order to be in compliance with this law. Uh, Westerville City Schools received an exemption from increasing our prices for the 2014-2015 school year um, citing a waiver due to the fact that um, we have continually increased our prices um, since the implementation of the regulations in the school meal pricing. Currently, we are not charging enough and need to increase lunch prices. Our average price based on the October 2014 lunch counts was only $2.61. To minimize the impact on the Westerville families, we need to increase the meal pricing by 10 cents at each pricing level. I'm sorry, each grade level. Um, the increased revenue will offset the increased cost of food supplies, employee labor, and benefits that we saw this year as well. So it's recommended that the Board of Education approve the 10 cent increase <coughs> to meal pricing for all students in the 15-16 school year. So this is federal requirement. Yeah. It is. <laughs> and if we told the feds no, what would happen? I might do a dance. Um, <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. How long would it take them to catch us? I don't know. No. I, I know. I'm concerned. You know, here we have this lovely, healthy balance. You've done a wonderful job 
managing the food service program. We are solidly in the black. We have been in the black for some time. It's, it's a difficult thing for me. And I realize we're talking 50 cents a week. Okay, I, I understand that. Mm -hmm. But it's a very difficult thing for me, given the fact that we have um, a sufficient revenue stream and we have a sufficient balance in the account. It's even though it's 50 cents a week, it's still problematic for me to say I want to raise the prices on the lunches. So I'm only half facetiously saying what would happen if we did not. Well, a little share about our fund balance as well. I know it's sitting at $1.2 million. We're also required to keep three months of operating funds on hand. Of that $1.2 million, just over $1 million of that is our required um, minimal amount that we uh, have to have. On hand. Um, what happens if you, we say no? We could be seen out of compliance with the federal regulations and could potentially risk our funding. You can vote no. Yeah, so, th <laughs> so the thing is, yeah, I can vote no on this and risk losing the funding, which would be a heck of a lot more than 50 cents a week, yeah. unfortunately. No more uh, black. I, I am, I'll tell you the truth. I am seriously annoyed by the level of federal engagement yes. in what we're doing with food service. I'm annoyed with a number of the changes that they've forced you to make. I am annoyed with their requirements on our budget, and I am annoyed with their requirement that I have to vote to raise the lunch prices by 10 cents. I'm not annoyed with you at all, <laughs> but I am very annoyed with what the feds are doing, and I consider this to be federal overreach. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah. I think it's not only food services in a lot of places, but we won't go there <laughs> tonight. And this is that <laughs> this is that 51 percent that we're talking about. That's what we're risking. This is actually at a lunch. It's 33.8 percent of our students that we serve um, that participate on an average daily basis that would be affected. Say that uh, percentage again. 33.8 percent. Okay. Roughly 200 a day. Roughly what? 200 students a day. Mm -hmm. Basically, we don't really have a lot of option, do we? We don't, unfortunately. We will continue to apply for waivers as we are able to, to put it off as long as we possibly can. So you're recommending we, we, we vote yes on this? I am recommending that we adopt it. Anybody else want to say? No, no, I'm just <laughs> kidding. We're actually on the budget wise. We're only uh, two tenths of, of our point two a million over what we need so at this required, uh, required what they us the to required to uh, amount that we need to keep in right. the um, budget. Yeah, so we're not that far. I mean, we are somewhat, but yeah. and still to meet the regulations, we are talking fifty cents a week. So, yeah. Okay. That is a helpful clarification um, that the that the overage is well it's it's a big chunk of that's mandated the three month and so that's just that's just helpful thank you it's it's a big number to see yes yes, yes. no I was just uh, going to register the same frustration Dr French I understand I, I think I look at this particular issue a little bit differently from an operational standpoint I just find it fascinating that the federal government feels the need to inject itself determining what we can, cannot serve, where we can buy from, what we can do, how we can cook it, what we can serve, and then on the other end also dictates to us what we can charge or what we must charge, not what we can. Um, and uh, this, is, uh, this almost feels even more like uh, a special circumstance as far as federal overreach because um, it's almost to the point where there's no local control at all. Um, and it's it's frustrating, um, you know. I you know I don't know other than having conversations with our local federal elected representatives on this topic, because I know that this is a long-standing legacy within yes. the USDA and their involvement in school lunches. But um, I don't ultimately when when our focus as school districts is the best interests of our students. I'm not exactly sure what the additional value is that's generated by this direct participation of the federal government. Um, I don't understand what what any community gets as an extra out of this. Um, I feel like we carry the burden of a tremendous amount of overhead in order to satisfy these requirements. So uh, register my concerns as well.
okay, we need to stop talking or the kids are not going to get pizza on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. So, Wednesdays. Bart, let's take the roll. <laughs> With no salt and minimal. Yes, I know. No Mr. Cheese. Bird? Veggies. Yes. Dr. Nestor Baker? Yes, grudgingly. Mis Mr. Villardo? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 13.01, public comments, and we have one speaker tonight, Meta Han, and you have five minutes. Uh, good evening, members of the board, Dr. Kellogg. Uh, my qu some of my answers have, some of my, some of the answers to my question have been answered by this food services report, but um, what I wanna really know is concerning all day kindergarten, and specifically regarding those who apply for free tuition or reduced tuition. And I've heard this report from food services and understand there's a process that confirms the applicants truly meet the requirements. But I'd like to know what are the initial steps the district uses to verify that the incomes truly qualify for free or reduced lunch, which is going to qualify for free uh, or reduced kindergarten. Well, I would say you're looking for an answer right now. Um, because if you have it, <laughs> well. Uh, we'll follow up with Ms. Hahn um, from our office okay. this week. I'll follow back up with you. I have your number. I'll get in touch with you and I'll walk okay. you through it. Okay, well, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If that's okay with the board. Oh, that's mm -hmm. absolutely okay. I think that we just need to be mindful that you, you know, our speakers have a, some time to you know, articulate their question and plan for it, that we would like to do that back. So thank you. Um, moving on, dates, times, and locations of the next meeting. Uh, 15, hmm? Oh, we, we're, no one's allowed to speak tonight. I'm sorry, 14.01 board comments. Does anyone have anything to say? No? Just a yes. quick follow up um, on the speaker's question. That is something that's asked fairly regularly in the community, how verifications occur. So it would be helpful, I think, to, to find a way to address that so that people have the knowledge. We do it. We do it well. We do it successfully. We've been doing it for years, but we don't really talk about how we do it. That would be good. Um, also, uh, just a reminder, uh, Food Service, if you can get us that report out that you just gave us. You had a lot of good statistics on there and uh, information. So thank you. Um, just real quick, uh, North Mock Trial Team, again, awesome, really, great, great job. South Basketball, uh, be uh, uh, state champs in a few days. Um, <laughs> did I jinx it? Uh, no, it's awesome, this would keep going. And um, actually, if you're, if you're leaving here soon, uh, the McDonald's on South State Street is doing a fundraiser for South Athletics. So uh, go and get some uh, healthy chicken McNuggets or something. <laughs> uh, eat some carrots. They have carrots there too. And um, just wanted to update you on some of, the, some of that good information. Thank you. Okay. Um, quick reminder, Partners for Education will host the third annual Nationwide Children's Hospital Starry Night, a family learning festival at Westerville North High School, Sunday, April 12th from 2 to 6. Um, I want to give a shout out to Maxwell James, an eighth grader at Genoa, and Reese Rexroad, a seventh grader at Walnut Springs. They're semifinalists and eligible to compete in the 2015 National Geographic State B, held at Ohio Dominican uh, Friday, March 27. And that's it. That's all I have. Bart, do you have anything you would like to add? No? Dr. Kellogg? No? Okay. Gosh. Okay, now, dates, times, and locations of the next meeting. The next board meeting, the regular session, will be held Monday, April 13th and April 27th, 2015, here at the Early Learning Center. The board will meet Monday, April 20th at 6 p.m. at North High School um, for the GEM Awards. So join us for that. And may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. So. Second. Is that good for a second? Call the roll. Mr. Villardo? Yes. Dr. Nestor Baker? Yes. 
Mr. Bird? Yes. Dr. French? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. We're adjourned.